In this video, I share the valuable insights and wisdom I gained from delving into the powerful book The Prepared Leader by Erica James and Lynn Perry Wooten. This book is a must-read for anyone seeking insights on how to manage and persevere through a crisis. Introduction In addition to death and taxes, crises are a certainty in the business world. The current crisis being referred to is the COVID-19 pandemic, but it is suggested that there may be other crises in the future. The video being advertised will provide information on the five stages of crisis management and the nine most essential skills for navigating through a crisis. Additionally, the video will also include examples of leaders who were successful in managing a crisis and even emerged stronger from it. Idea number one. The COVID-19 pandemic caught many people off guard, despite warnings from experts. The economic cost of the pandemic is high and it is suggested that people were not adequately prepared for it. The authors go on to explain that human beings are not naturally inclined to prepare for future crises due to cognitive biases such as probability neglect and the anchoring effect. However, by being aware of these biases, individuals can take steps to overcome them and become better prepared for future crises. They use the example of Adam Silver, the commissioner of the National Basketball Association (NBA), as a successful leader who recognized and managed the crisis effectively. The video will provide more information on developing the skills necessary to be a prepared leader in a crisis. Idea number two. The importance of being a prepared leader and note that in addition to the traditional triple bottom line of caring for people, the planet, and profits, leaders must also have a fourth bottom line of prepared leadership. The authors have identified five phases of crisis management that are key to becoming a prepared leader. These include early warning and signal detection, preparation and prevention, damage containment, recovery, and learning and reflection. They also note that in order to be successful in each of these phases, leaders must possess certain skills such as the ability to spot early warning signs, have a crisis response team in place, and recover and learn from a crisis. The next section of the video will delve into these skills in more detail. Idea number three. The authors are describing an exercise in which they imagine themselves as a migratory bird called a swift, which takes flight twice a day to analyze air currents, weather systems, and atmospheric conditions. They note that this is a sensible system that every prepared leader should have in place, referring to the first phase of crisis management, early warning and signal detection. They explain that in order to excel in this phase, leaders should possess two skills, sense-making and perspective-taking. Sense-making is the ability to make sense of what is seen and perspective-taking is the ability to have a diverse team to spot anything out of the ordinary and worthy of attention. They use the example of Mark Aslett, the head of Mercury Systems, an aerospace and defense electronics company, who was named one of the 25 highest-rated CEOs during the COVID-19 crisis, and credited his success to his crisis response team which had been monitoring the virus for months. They then explain that in the next phase, preparation and prevention, there are three main skills to consider, influence, organizational agility, and creativity. Summary. The importance of diversity and trust in decision-making and setting up a crisis management team. A well-rounded team with diverse skill sets and clear goals centered around a shared vision can help to avoid blind spots and foster an environment where people feel empowered and comfortable speaking up. Technology can also play a role in crisis management by allowing for a global mindset and streamlining communication, but it is important to be aware of its potential pitfalls and use it responsibly. It is also important to learn from both success stories and mistakes to improve crisis management strategies. Now, that was only a small portion of what I learned. I highly recommend reading it for more insights. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to hit the subscribe button, like this video, and share it with your friends and followers. Your support helps me to grow my channel and reach a wider audience, and I am so grateful for it. 
Don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay up to date on my latest videos. Thanks again for watching, and I can't wait to share more with you in the future.